Booga booga booga. What's up, YouTube? Brandon Baldwin. This is Zeus McCoos. Welcome to Gizmo Slip, a show where we unbox, review, and drop test the latest in technology. Today, we're bringing you the review of the Samsung Galaxy S3. Alright guys, welcome to the Samsung Galaxy S3 review. First, we're going to go over some basic features of this phone. It's got a 4.8 inch 720p front display, AMOLED screen. Uh, it's got a front facing webcam, 720p as well. Uh, as well as a light detection uh, meter, and so it adjusts the screen brightness if you set it to that. Uh, on the front, it's got a home button along with two touch buttons that are the menu and the back buttons. On the back, we've got a 1080p camera. Uh, the speaker and the LED flash. On the top we've got the headphone port as well as the little notch to uh, be able to take off the back cover. Uh, on the bottom we've got the USB charging cable and on the side we've got the power and on the other side we've got the volume rocker. Uh, if you take off the case, the back case, you can see that it actually has the micro SD and SIM card slots along with a removable 2100 mAh battery. Uh, it should be said that this battery is larger than most phones currently. Overall, we really like the build quality on the Samsung Galaxy S3. It has a glass front that's entirely edge to edge. There's no rim or anything, and that makes it very beautiful. It's a marvelous device to look at. Marvelous. Uh, but the 4.8 inch screen is very large. It's bigger. It's a little bit bigger than most other phones and almost as big as the Galaxy Note, but they fit it on a smaller frame, which is great. Although it is still really big and sometimes getting my thumb up there to the top can be very difficult because uh, the screen is so large. Uh, overall though, it is feels very solid in your hand, very properly weighted. It's got a plastic back and sides and that is why we knocked one squib off for a rating of 4 out of 5. We really enjoyed the Samsung Galaxy S3's 4.8 inch 720p display. So it is retina display quality. It is actually higher DPI than the printed page, which is the standard is 300. Uh, as far as the colors, we like the colors. They might be a little oversaturated at times, but honestly, I like that in a phone. Depends on the user though. Some people may not like that. Uh, overall, it's plenty big, and in some instances, perhaps too big. If you have small hands, you may have a hard time reaching the top of the screen, as I mentioned earlier. So keep that in mind, if you're of small hands and you don't want to deal with a large screen, don't get this phone because it's enormous. 4.8 inches is about as big as you can get without going to the Galaxy Note, which is pretty much a miniature tablet. So overall, the screen is great. We gave it a 5 out of 5 squibs. Moving on. In my day and a half of using the Samsung Galaxy S3, I had no issues with call quality. It never dropped a call. Not to say that it won't, but it didn't in my experience so far. The voice clarity was good. Everyone could understand me. I could understand them. We gave it a 5 out of 5 for call quality. This phone comes with Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. It might also get the update to 4.1, hopefully in the near future, but it may not. Jelly Bean is just around the corner, and it's got some cool new features. Overall, we really liked what Samsung did with this phone, though. It has a number of additional features, starting with the top sensor. It can actually sense when you tap the top of the phone, and if you're, for example, if you're scrolling through a list and you want to go to the top, just double tap the top and it'll take you right there. As well as when you're in the phone directory, all you have to do is swipe right to call someone or left to text message them. The welcome interface is actually really refreshing. It's got this pond where you, as if your finger is going across water. You can also unlock text messages or phone calls. Uh, there's also the Samsung Galaxy Voice, which I'm going to demo for you right now. Here's a test of the uh, Siri-like application on the Samsung Galaxy S3 called the S Voice. Text Darren Dyke, hey man, what's going on? Okay, here is your message. Ready to send it. And it actually got it perfectly fine. Uh, I'm canceling it there. Uh, I'm also gonna try something else, let's see. I'd like to eat pizza tonight. Let's see what let's see what happens. Oh look, there's a Nizza Pizza. There's the nearest pizza restaurants. Tapit Pizza is amazing. If you ever get to Houston, try Tapit Pizza. Uh, I'd like to go to a mall. 
Let's see what happens with this one. West Chase Mall, Memorial City Mall. Look at that. That's actually really impressive. I'm, I'm actually really impressed right now. Overall, software interface was quite good. We gave it a 5 out of 5. Because it is ice cream sandwich, the S3 performs quite well with a Snapdragon S4 1.5 GHz dual core processor. It can handle your applications. It, can, it handles the Android 4.0 very smoothly when you're switching menus. It does so perfectly smoothly. We enjoyed the overall experience. It's able to play pretty much all of your great latest games that you're going to want to play. Uh, overall, we gave it a performance score of 5 out of 5 and a gaming score of a 4.5 because it does not have the NVIDIA chip. So again, it can't take advantage of those special NVIDIA special effects that they incorporate in some of those games. Battery on the S3 is excellent. It has a 2100 mAh, which is enough to get you through every day uh, unless you're a very heavy power user constantly on your phone. Uh, if you need a, a smartphone with better battery life than this one, look to the Droid Razor Max, which is going to be able to get you through the day pretty much no matter what, every time. Whereas this phone will still run out if you're a really heavy power user. Uh, overall, though, most users will probably get through the day and still have at least 30% left, if not more. Uh, if you used it on a light day, I would estimate you'd still have 50% left. So overall, we gave a battery life rating of 4.5, which is very good. And uh, moving on. The camera on the S3 is quite good. It has an 8 megapixel shooter on the back, as well as 1080p video recording. All right, guys, this is a sample video for the Galaxy S3. And I'm going to flip it around. You can see the sunset. And uh, do a little sky change there so you can see how it handles the light. Guys, here's the front webcam test, uh, test video. There's the sunset again, and I hope you enjoy it. The camera application actually is also very extensive. It allows you to switch out the shortcuts on the side as well as uh, change the ISO and the exposure and a number of settings that most camera apps actually don't let you change. So being a professional photographer, uh, it enables me to take better photos, even though obviously it can't replace a true professional camera. This is just one step closer though to being able to give the user manual control if the, the user wants it. Overall we gave the camera a 4.5 because it's not quite good as some of those dedicated camera phones like the Nokia 808 or the HTC Titan. The S3 utilizes the Google Play Store which is basically the Android Marketplace. It used to be called the Android Marketplace. Google rebranded it to the Play Store. Uh, overall, it is quite good, though there are still applications that are just missing on the Android Marketplace that, you know, if you went to the iTunes store and bought this game or you used to have this game and you moved to the Android phone, you may not be able to get it, though probably 90% of the time you can because most app developers are making them for both uh, platforms now, which is great news for Android users and overall great because it just means overall more applications across more platforms is always a good thing. Overall, we give it a 4.5 for the app marketplace. In conclusion then, the S3 is excellent. We gave it a 4.6 overall squib rating if you average out all the different categories. And it is quite good in almost every aspect. The one major drawback I will say about the phone is gonna be the screen size because some people just don't have big enough hands. And at the same time, that's one of its biggest strengths because being able to utilize that big screen is just awesome. Being able to watch videos and surf the web and be able to just see more detail on things. The only real competition in my mind is the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, the HTC Resound, and the Droid Razor Max. Those are the top four phones other than the iPhone. Obviously, I personally wouldn't get the iPhone just because it doesn't have 4G LTE. So that's really unfortunate. Hopefully, the new iPhone will have that. We're going to be drop testing this phone on Friday. If it survives, we're going to be giving it away. So you're going to want to subscribe and then also comment on that video if it survives. But if it fails, we're going to be destroying it spectacularly, probably with dynamite. I don't know. We're going to be, either way, we're going to be destroying some devices and posting that because uh, we actually have the Samsung Galaxy S2 that failed that we need to actually destroy. So we're going to be posting a video, a uh, destruction video on Friday no matter what. So you're going to want to come back and check that out. If you missed the unboxing, go ahead and click right here and uh, go check that out. And don't forget to subscribe, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. And we'll see you guys on Friday. Gizmo Slip.